Hey everyone, welcome to my second pickup video of 2022. I hope you are all well. So, following on from the theme of the last video where I also went into details about the change from that UK Gamer to the Geek Master, um, my plan is, in terms of videos, to get at least two out a week in some manner. Not 100% sure what a time, obviously. But I'm looking at doing a pickups video at the start of each month for the previous month. However, as is the case here, there will be exceptions for special items, special occasions. Such as when I went to Comic Con previously. And this isn't the Christmas items yet, that's still coming. Um, I'm waiting for something to add into the video. This is a separate pickups video, still relating from around that time though. So this month there'll probably be more pickups videos, but generally it'll be one a month, possibly going to two on occasions. So, some background into this video. So I have a whole box of pickups here with I think it's about 16-ish items. Um these, as you can probably tell from the thumbnail and video title, are all Japanese. And as is common around the New Year period, companies like to have sales. Boxing Day sales, New Year sales, sales for the sake of it. One place that had a New Year sale was the Facebook page, Japanese Retro Game Sales, run by Alan up in Scotland. I know some of the people here who watch my videos know of him. They would have seen him at the London Gaming Market. I think he's a bit of Play Expo in Blackpool, etc. Or ordered from him on Facebook themselves. And I did this last year. I bought stuff to the uh, New Year sale where stuff was half price. And he's done it again. And my games arrived today. So, partly because I want the box for something. Um, and I want to get this video done. Here are the items I got through that sale. Um, the total package came to, I think, £55 I paid. However, that also included £8 for delivery. So, in reality, I paid £47 for these games, which works out about £3 a game, which isn't bad. And these were all 50% off. And although some of them I have no idea about them, some of them are titles which I'm sure you will recognise, especially if you're a Sega fan. So... Let's get into the games. First of all, here is the box. And here is some padding. So, I think, actually there's 17 games. 8 for the Sega Saturn, 7 for the Dreamcast, a PS3 game and a Wii game. So... To get it out of the way, here's the PS3 game, and for me, the obligatory FIFA game. This is a Japanese copy of FIFA 12, also called World Class Soccer, apparently. Uh, not sure who the players are, if I'm totally honest. Uh, I think this one cost me two quid. And it's complete. I think most of these are complete, but I'm not 100% sure. They were mentioned on the post where I got them from. And I will share links down below to his Facebook page. He also has a shop up in Scotland called Forgotten Worlds, which I will also link to. But yes. Okay. That was a normal price, three quid. I paid two, so not quite 150, but 50%, but we'll take it. It's a cool entry for my uh, FIFA collection. What I can tell you is though, although I can't see the players up, that is Wolfsburg in Germany, and I believe that's CSKA in Moscow in Russia. Um, the next non-Sega game is the last non-Sega game. Um, it's not the biggest one in the franchise by a long shot, but it's a lot more interesting to most people, I suspect, than FIFA. It was £3 on the Wii and is Link's Crossbow Training, making this my first Japanese Zelda game, I believe. Which, for those of you that don't know, this here is my little Zelda section. And although you can't really see it here, I have a load of Amiibo up there. So this will be going straight into that part of the uh, collection. 
So if anyone's played crossbow training, you'll know that it's based on uh, Twilight Princess for the Wii, the Wii version. And it has those mini games where you shoot stuff, um, get practice. You use the Wii Zapper, which I do have. One didn't come with this. I mean, it was six quid, it says it, so I would have paid three. Um, and you use it as a gun and just do it in the Zelda context by making it a crossbow. And it is good because it also has the music from the game, some of which is actually music from other games, such as I believe the Fire Boss music from Ocarina of Time music, so that's pretty cool. Here's some pictures from that, including how to use the zapper. So, yeah. I do like how that looks like a target though for archery, so that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, my first Zelda title, which I'm quite happy about. Yes, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's my first foreign Zelda title actually. Um, I think we'll get into the Saturn. Main reason being, I can actually play my Dreamcast games. So, here we go, eight of them. So, the first one is Puyo Puyo 2. And this cost me £2.50. Um, they're still, as you can tell, in the plastic sleeve. So I'm just going to uh, take it out. It is complete. And this is my first Puyo Puyo game, which is an actual Puyo Puyo game. And by that, I mean... My nose is so itchy right now, so... <laughs> Um, I believe it's the base for Dr. Robotics Mean Bean Machine on the Mega Drive and Mars system, which is an awesome game, if I must say. So I've played the game using this engine and designs. In fact, I think that is very similar to one of the characters that appears in Mean Bean Machine. And when I say that similar, I mean very similar. So yeah, so my first actual Puyo Puyo game, not my first game using the engine and design. Second one, right, also, for context, especially Saturn, there's not many great titles. I just went for cheap ones I didn't have just because I wanted to get as many as I can without spending too much, um, and I just wanted to build up the collection. But I tried to go for ones that were interesting to me. So, unfortunately, as FIFA might tell you, there are some sports titles, such as World Cup Golf, which, as you can see, was £4, therefore £2. If I can get it out of the plastic. There we go. Interestingly, Puyo Puyo is missing the back. Um, so here you go. World Cup Golf. Which, again, complete. I can't actually play these Saturn games yet, but I'm working on getting one of the action replay cartridges to allow me to do it. Failing that, I do half have an eye on a Japanese Saturn, so who knows. But yes, next up we have more, for me, obligatory football games with V-Goal 96. Or J-League Victory Goal, as you might want to call it. The J-League, of course, being the Japanese equivalent of the Premier League. And this was also £4, so £2. Looks to me like some sort of multi-tab can be used. Is that is that a thing for the Saturn? I'm not 100% sure. I may be a, Saturn, a Sega fan, but the Saturn's not my strongest point. And as you can see, it's complete. This next one's a bit more interesting, actually, and is a bit more than the rest of them, and isn't football or sport related, surprisingly. It is the game Find Love. Which, uh, first of all, was £18, so it cost me nine quid. But also actually has an 18 rating, I think that says. So, yeah. And as you can see, there's a girls in their underwear and stripping. So, yeah. So, this will join the uh, pervert collection, I guess. With uh, block knockers and 
what I saw uncovered and perky little things which is on the way which I know a few people have grabbed. Uh yeah. <laughs> Although this one does look like, as far as I'm aware, you actually just uh, do puzzles. So to spot the difference, um, jigsaw puzzles, having watched some gameplay on YouTube. So who knows? And again, complete. Featuring lots of girls in their underwear or bikinis or whatever. So, yeah. Right, two games here. We have greatest nine and why stop at one and you can have two and go greatest nine ninety seven and this one was two quid this one was three quid so it cost me two pound fifty between them or you could argue as i just paid a pound for this one a pound for this japanese satin game so depends how you want to look at it and this is as you may be able to tell from that and possibly that and that it's a baseball game which is huge in japan well, I don't know if the game is, but baseball is. <sighs> Again, it's complete, and that definitely gives you an indication of what it is. And the second one. That's the unconventional way of uh, removing the wrapper. Uh, it's a different wrapper, that's why. Two more Saturn games after this. Man. Almost got it there we go. This is the second one, the 97 one. Two more. And a couple for the retro bear here. Uh we have a fishing game for one pound fifty and guess what? Another fishing game with what appears to maybe be swordfish on them. So this one is sea bass fishing. I know it's been a few bass games, so yeah. So this is one of them, sea bass fishing two even. <laughs> Including some fishing guy. Whether he's a freaky fish guy, I don't know. And if you get that reference, nice one. Last Saturn game is Hiroki Matsukata Presents World Fishing. Some of you might say I've uh, dumped a shark here buying these. And I guess that's uh, Hiroki Matsukata. And they are my eight new Japanese Sega Saturn games. As I said, there's seven Dreamcast. Some more familiar titles here, which I bought because to be honest, they're full Dreamcast. They're Dreamcast classic titles. You need them. That's not to say there's not the cheap stuff though. First game for two quid. Okay, now, I didn't realise this until they arrived today, but a couple of them aren't actually in jewel cases. So I'll have to find some, but thankfully they seem to have everything else. The first one is this, which is a football game about the J League again, but I can't remember exactly what it's called. Um, but it's got soccer in the name, I can tell you that much. J League Perot Soccer something Crab. It looks like it says crab, but that can't be right. <laughs> but yeah. If I find out the name I'll let you know. But it does have Macromedia Flash. So as you can see we've got the little cards here. The disc and the manuals and that. So once we find the cases, uh, we'll be fine. Uh, yeah. 
Although now I wonder if it's promotional because it actually says no resale, so there you go. Oh no. Let's make a soccer club. That's it. Okay. Uh we'll hold on to them two till last. The best till last. Next up we have a couple of Dreamcast baseball games with um Power Pro Baseball, I believe it's called. I've got a couple of these for the 64. This is the, as you can tell, Dreamcast edition. It cost me a quid. So. Also, that Let's Make a Soccer Club. I have an equivalent on the green from Saturn, I believe. Might need to find a new case for this. Because that's quite a bit crack. Um, if not, I'm not too worried. Um, put it down there. Next up is another one. This is another Power Pro one, I believe. I might be wrong though, but it actually, I believe, features actual teams along. There, and there is another version of this, which I think I actually have. So I don't know if one's one year and one's another year. All I know is the cover's different, so, yeah. And also, it cost me a quid again, and I can't get out of the plastic. There we go. Pro Yaku Team Dis Assable. This is it right there. Okay, four left, and another one pound one, one for big game out here. It's your obligatory horse game. This one is called, I'm not entirely sure to be honest. Um, something to do with a derby. So, I know there's a derby stallion, maybe? I think I might have it for the 64. I think it's a Japanese exclusive series, so it might be part of that. If anyone does know for sure, let me know. But it does say around here, I don't know if you better see it. Let's become Derby owner. Well, they might well be up for sale. They are in administration at this time. I'm not sure the fans want Mike Ashley after the whole Newcastle debacle. So, this game told the future uh, almost 20 years ahead of its time. Uh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Very orange. And there's some horse legs. Okay, the case seems a little stiff on this one. So. There we go, got it shut. Okay, um, this next one, uh, I've actually gone through the pictures of what was available and I recognised a couple of these pictures. I was like, I know that from somewhere, but I didn't know where. And I just spent literally five, ten minutes in my head just thinking, trying to figure out where I recognise these people from. So the people in name are, and this game is more and with a spine, are these people here. Now, I don't know if these people will mean anything to anyone. I can't remember their names exactly, but I realised where I know them from, and I did some research and verified. It's from an anime in English called Rumbling Hearts. However, unlike most cases where the game is made either based on the anime or manga, this actually started off as this game. And then, because it's popular, an anime was made. Um, Japanese name I'm not entirely sure of, but I think it starts with Kimiwa or Kimiga. I can't remember exactly. Ga. I think it's Ga. Because of the... That is Ga. Um, I'll try and find out the name and add it. But, um, yeah, it took me a little while, so I haven't seen it for a while. But I do actually have the discs, 
over in the corner over there, which you can't see. But one day you will. Um, so yeah. So it's an actual addition to my games. Well, not based on anime, but at least connected to anime. And this does follow the anime plot, surprisingly. Or more like the anime follows this plot. So this is one I can tell you about, which is basically... Um, this girl likes a guy. Guy ends up with her. Them two are friends. Um, they, her and the guy go to meet on a date. He gets delayed because he meets her and it's her birthday. She and gets him to buy her a ring. Because uh, he was delayed in meeting her and she was waiting for him, she got caught up in an accident at the train station and ended up in a coma for three years, during which time she got together with the guy. And then it goes from there. So, yeah. So the moral for that story is, don't be late for a date. Um, some pictures from the back. Try to avoid glare. Um, yeah. So this is one I'm actually tempted to try having seen that anime. And maybe I need to give the anime another go as well, actually. And interestingly, this looks like from 2002. So after the Dreamcast stopped production. And it was £12, so I paid six quid for this. So I'm actually really happy with that. So yeah. I'm just going to say Rumbling Hearts because that's what I know, but it's proper name as it I've displayed previously. Uh, two games. Now, these are the big two as far as I'm concerned for Dreamcast. So, one big game for the Dreamcast was Fantasy Star Online. And unfortunately, this is the other game that doesn't have a case. So, I'll have to put one in it. But everything else, as you can see again, is there. So... And I paid four quid for this. So, not too shabby. Well, it's in a little wallet thing, but I'll just put the case. It does have a lot of paperwork, though. I'll say that. So, that's pretty cool. I've never really played Fantasy Star online. I've played a bit of Universe, I think it was, on 360. But I know this was a massive game for the Dreamcast. And I think the GameCube as well. Um, so I had to buy it really. Just because it's like, it's a classic for the console as far as I'm concerned in a way. So yeah, £4, Fantasy Star Online, version 2 I must know. Version 2. Last game. I think this last game of the whole lot is probably one of, if not the uh, games for which the Dreamcast is known. In fact, it's entirely possible that a lot of people, in my opinion, may well say this game if you ask them to name a Dreamcast game. So you may well be able to guess what game I'm talking about. And I paid £5 for this. And it is, of course, Shenmue. A lot of people know about Shenmue and the Dreamcast because it was one of the first open world games, if not the first. Um, I have played the English one on my Dreamcast. I haven't played loads of it. I did enjoy it. I need to go back to it. I haven't played two or three ever, though. Um, but yeah, this is a game I was also introduced to by my partner, Retro Crazy. So, yeah. So... Having a Dreamcast, it just had to have a Japanese copy of Shenmue, to be honest. It's just necessary. Especially for five quid. So, yeah. So, let's open it quickly. Uh, 
Oh yes. So there's this three and the passport, which I believe the English one had as well. And there's discs one and two. So yeah. Shemu. So, any games that catch your eye, any you've never heard of, I wouldn't be surprised. I reckon some must be obscure. I'm sure most of you may well have heard of Shemu at least, if not Fantasy Star Online. Probably FIFA and Zelda too, but I can't say for definite. But what would be your favourite of them? Which one would you want to try? So, personally, I kind of want to try the Rumbling Hearts one, just where I've watched the anime before. But I've got to be honest, I kind of want to try Japanese crossbow training, but I don't have a way to play it yet, so yeah. But anyway, uh, they're my Japanese pickups. I do actually have a couple more Japanese games coming, so I might do a I might do mini pickup videos, like just quick two, three minute jobs. So, the return of YouTube trousers and that they're slightly longer shorts. So, keep an eye out for them. And it's for a series, um, and games, you'd have heard of at least two of them, I reckon, most people. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. Uh, I've already started working towards pickups for February. It won't be as big as this or the last video at the minute anyway. But I might get a couple of games on Saturday. So we will see. We're recording this on Monday the 17th. So keep an eye out. But for now, I just want to say thank you all for watching. And I should have an update on Becoming a Geek Master soon. Thanks. Uh, have a good week. I'll see you soon. Bye.